Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we investigate the shady goings on at tech corporation Tech Aid Robotics and the unsettling malfunctions that occurred with their animatronic creation Mayday. This is the story of Input 6 Explained, so sit back, relax, and let's begin our investigation. Our story begins with two brothers, William and Christopher Graft, who in the late 1960s formed a small company focused on designing technological advancements for medical facilities. This company was named Tech Aid Innovations. However, the need to expand this business caused a feud between the two brothers, who couldn't agree on the direction the company was headed. This led to the brothers shutting down Tech Aid in November 1970. After William and Christopher Graft fell out with one another, they decided to part ways. William changed his name from Graft to J. Price, and began working on a new, secretive project. Meanwhile, his brother Christopher started investing in small businesses, and while working in this field, met fellow investor Bradley Luca, and eventually joined his company, Lucra Innovations. Bradley Luca came from a family of traders and had inherited his great wealth from his late parents. His company, Luca Innovations, was founded in 1981 with the intention of buying out smaller companies and then profiting from their success. Though this company had become notorious for worsening working conditions for businesses that he bought up. Luca was ruthless, cutting worker wages and closing companies that failed to financially perform without warning. He was a tyrant of the investment scene. Still, Christopher Graft and Bradley Luca seemed to work well together, and Graft was eventually appointed director of Argrest Industries, a subsidiary of Luca Innovations which specialised in private security and production of military equipment. In 1992, William J. Price reconnected with his brother Christopher Graft and secured funding for his secret project, a robotic helper named Mayday which he hoped to mass produce. This funding came from Christopher's boss, Bradley Luca, who purchased the Mayday project and resurrected the TechAid brand as a new subsidiary company to Luca Innovations. This company was named TechAid Robotics and William was appointed its director. The Mayday project was officially revealed at a public showcase in September 1993, an event the press were invited to attend. They were able to preview the Mayday robot ahead of its launch on January 3rd, 1994. So, what exactly is Mayday, and what was the concept behind its design? William J. Price described Mayday as a robotic personal assistant that will forever change a person's life for the better. Mayday's design resembles that of a feminine-looking maid. The word Mayday, a play on the word Mayday, which is an internationally recognised radio signal used to call for help. This name can also be split up to read Made Aid, so the intention for Mayday was to mass produce and sell her to the public, eliminating the need for a real life human and replacing them with a robotic servant who can cook, clean and even converse with their owner. This was made possible via artificial intelligence systems which connected to Mayday's onboard camera and synchronised with it. This camera captured everything that Mayday witnessed, and the footage was then stored and sent back to servers at TechAid Robotics for analysis. Though, when announced, this method of surveillance caused some controversy. The public were worried about their private life being catalogued by a tech company, who may then be privy to their personal information. TechAid assured the press that these recordings were purely used for research purposes, and any information taken from them would be consensual with the user. Mayday functions based on voice commands, and has six different work modes that occur based depending on a given command. These are the booting up mode, waiting for the command mode, executing the command mode, busy mode, sleep mode, and alert mode. The alert mode is a special mode which occurs as a result of Mayday receiving a direct command from TechAid Robotics headquarters. While in this mode, Mayday's eyes glow orange or red, and users are unable to issue commands until the signal from TechAid has been completed. 
Essentially, alert mode is an override from the manufacturer, perhaps installed as a safeguard in case users issued a dangerous command and the robot needed to be immediately stopped in its tracks. Mayday also runs off battery power. This battery is installed in her chest plate and then powered up via a charging station. However, users are warned to be sure they are registered in Mayday's memory before powering her up. So it seems there is a chance of a robot becoming hostile if they do not recognize the user. This alert mode and reliance on battery power were also reasons for Mayday's downfall, as we will soon see. So now with the robot's origins and background explained, let us proceed to exploring the events of the game itself. Input 6 begins with a letter from William J. Price, Christopher Graft, and Bradley Luca. This letter is addressed to all employees working at TechAid Robotics. It is dated April 18th, 1994. The letter alludes to a recent event that occurred at the company, one that caused a mass evacuation of its staff. Due to these events, the company will be closed until further notice. During this closure, management plans to conduct an investigation under its sister company, Agrest Industries. The letter ends with management asking for employees to remain calm until the company can reopen after the investigation concludes. We then step into the shoes of an investigator, who seems to be reviewing footage taken from six inputs around the TechAid Robotics factory. Of these six inputs, only five appear to be working. The inputs are recordings captured by various Mayday units during the final 15 minutes leading up to the aforementioned catastrophe the letter alluded to. The player is tasked with locating five remote controls, each located in one of five areas of the factory, accessible by switching between Mayday inputs on the fly. These remotes shut down the Mayday unit we are currently controlling, taking them out of commission. These Mayday units have gone rogue and seem to be in alert mode, operating under mysterious instructions that originated directly from company headquarters. If these rogue Mayday units should catch us, then they shut down the recording and reset the player robot back to its starting position on the map. If we are caught on all inputs at once or the timer runs down before the remotes have been recovered, then it's game over. While exploring the factory, the player must also stave off malfunctions that occur to the Mayday we are currently controlling. Failing these minigames causes time to be cut from the clock and a variety of visual effects to occur, which impede player vision. Eventually, after all five remotes have been recovered and Mayday unit shut down, we access the final recording, one belonging to a Mayday unit on an upper level of the factory. This robot heads over to the production factory, where they power it up, this triggering a series of bombs to detonate around the facility. The explosion destroys the Mayday unit in pursuit, as well as the one the player controls as they witness the TechAid Robotics estate go up in a blaze of fire. The entire place was rigged to blow. We now come to the ending of the game, or rather the aftermath. But what led to TechAid Robotics' explosive end? Who was the person in control of the Mayday units, and why did all of this occur? Well, while we do have to fill in a few blanks, most of this information is explained through various archive entries and a well-hidden secret ending. It seems the Mayday malfunction occurred as a result of an alert command sent directly from TechAid Robotics headquarters. While exploring, we find an ID card, one left in the control room from where the alert signal originated. This ID belongs to a recently fired employee by the name of Andre Robinson. Andre held the position of Network System Manager before being fired for reasons unknown on the 18th of April 1994, the same day the catastrophe occurred. Therefore, it is logical to assume that Andre caused the Mayday units to malfunction as a way of getting revenge against his previous employer. However, the story goes a little deeper than that. From archived recordings, we learn that Bradley Luca, the owner of Lucra Innovations, planned to take ownership of the Mayday project after a slew of bad press. This bad press came in the form of numerous poor user experiences, some even life-threatening, as we learn when reading this warranty report where a user was threatened by a Mayday unit wielding a knife. Bradley wanted to take control of a project and tear it away from the two brothers, 
We learn about this information in a secret ending, which can be unlocked by collecting up a cassette tape which falls from the destroyed Mayday unit at the end of the game. This ending contains a conversation between brothers William and Christopher, where they plot to throw a proverbial wrench in Mr. Luca's plans for a hostile takeover. While we never discover exactly what their plan was, based on the placement of the ID card belonging to Andre Robinson, we can make an educated guess. Either the two brothers hired this disgruntled ex-employee to hack into the system and issue a widespread command to all Mayday units, causing them to go rogue and turn hostile, or they set things up to appear that way, leaving poor Andre as the fall guy. By overriding the Maydays and causing them to attack their owners, the company reputation would be ruined, and there would be nothing left for the greedy Bradley Luca to steal. But things didn't quite go to plan. It seems Bradley Luca, in his corrupt pursuit to cover up evidence of any wrongdoing, had his military subsidiary Argrest Industries rig TechAid Robotics with explosives and blow the place sky high, destroying all evidence. However, as we see from the archives, some of this evidence remained, though in a burned state. The aftermath of this led to the closure of TechAid Robotics and the apprehension of all involved. The brothers William J. Price and Christopher Graft, and their boss, Bradley Luca. All three were arrested, and the in-house investigation handed over to the Trail of Evidence Private Detective Agency, who worked closely with local police. In fact, we can see the Detective Agency stamp on many pieces of evidence throughout the archives, and this tells us that the character we play in the game is that of a detective working for this agency. We even hear their mumbles from time to time while reviewing evidence. Huh. Hey, uh, do you know if they found a video cassette at the site of the first explosion? Don't know, but if they did, then it probably hasn't been cataloged yet. So, with the three perpetrators now behind bars, and a top detective looking through Mayday's sinister origins with a fine-toothed comb, it seems all is well. The robots will be decommissioned, and those responsible for their rogue behaviour brought to justice. For once, a horror game that seems, at least on the surface, to have a happy ending. And with that, we come to the end of today's video, and a look at the story and ending of Input 6 Explained. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. And if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.